mix it. Just about anybody that finds them, I think, would eat them. Greeny and his team spend a lot of time monitoring nests and their contents. I think this is hatched today, probably. It takes a very sensitive scale to weigh a baby hummingbird. So, 0 0.401 grams. That's about the weight of a post-it note. There we go. Back safe and sound. Greeny recently discovered something astonishing about these black-chinned nests. It appears their locations are anything but random. We were just out to see what we could see and learn a little bit more about their nesting. And we noticed that this species of hummingbird often have all their nests clustered in one particular area. It turns out that right in the middle of each cluster of hummingbird nests is the nest of another kind of bird, a cooper's hawk. Come on over here. The cooper's hawk just landed right next to the nest and he's out in a branch. Unlike hummingbirds, cooper's hawks eat meat, including squirrels and many kinds of birds. In fact, birds are a cooper's hawk specialty. The hawks can fly with great agility through a thick forest to catch them on the wing. Strangely, the cooper's hawk's skills as a killer may be exactly why the hummers like to stay close. The hawk's favorite foods are all animals that prey on hummingbird nests. But the hummingbirds themselves are too small and fast for these big raptors to bother with. Somehow, the black chins have figured out that hawks make good neighbors, and that survival strategy really pays off. Scientists like Harold Greeny aren't the only ones keeping a close eye on hummingbirds or making surprising new discoveries about them. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a team of detectives is setting up a stakeout. They're looking for a tiny critter that's not native to these parts. Once their trap is set, they only have to watch and wait. Heading up the team is Nancy Newfield. She's a licensed hummingbird bander. Okay. Nancy is part of a network of banders across North America, keeping tabs on the bird's movements. It is a ruby throat. The little ruby throat will be held captive just long enough to get a physical. 3.4, that's nice weight. And have a tiny numbered band attached to her tiny leg. This is good. Next time she's spotted, that number checked against a central database will provide clues to where she's traveled. You ready to go, sweetheart? The ruby throat has a long trip ahead of her. There we go. Nearly all of the hummingbirds found in the U.S. and Canada are seasonal migrants. Breeding and nesting up north but spending the winter in the tropics of Central America. Twice a year, they make a journey that is truly epic. Given their body length, hummingbird migrations are the longest of any bird. A rufus might cover up to 6,000 miles round trip, shuttling between its winter home in central Mexico and the northern end of its breeding range in southern Alaska. A ruby throat's migration between Panama and its summer breeding grounds in the eastern U.S. is nearly as long. That journey includes a marathon flight across the Gulf of Mexico.